Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everyone. We hope you're well. We're having a good start to the week. And um, thank you so much for joining us live today for our speech and language Q&A. We're really lucky to be joined by Margaret from Hearts Libraries and Elaine from our Early Start team. And they're going to be sharing all their top tips for language development. And they'll be able to answer all your questions too. So please comment any questions that you have below in the comment section. And a big thank you to everyone that sent in their baby's first words in our Instagram story and on our Facebook posts. So here are some that were shared with us that we love. So we've got dad, ama, dada, mama, lots of mamas, <laughs> and tinky, bang, dinosaur. Um, someone shared that their little one waved and said hello to a mum at their baby sensory group. Um, Bella, someone's dog's name, which is really sweet and Denise, the little one's doll's name as well, which is really cute. So over to you, Elaine and Margaret. Well, can Lovely. I just jump in there, um, Chloe, because that's really Ooh. interesting, because um, we're obviously talking about speech and language today, and a lot of the um, first words there, beginning with the letters D or D, M, M, B, and G, which are the first letters that babies generally sound out um when they're starting to to talk and verbalize and obviously as well those are the most important things to those children so mums dads and dolls and dinosaurs <laughs> very important <laughs> very important yes and it's very very fascinating how babies learn language and they're picking up it Right, right from the get go, more probably earlier than you think, because hearing starts to develop in the womb at around 18 weeks of pregnancy. So that's when the ears are starting to like, oh, we're starting to work. The baby develops and then obviously the sounds will become louder for them and more distinguishable. And by sort of 27 to 30 weeks gestation, babies are going to react in the womb to noises and sounds that they can hear from the outside world. So obviously your voice as the mum is one of their most significant noises they're going to hear, but also of family members and of siblings and things, they're hearing them even before they're born. So, and there's lots of research about how newborns, when they come out, they react differently to sounds that were repeated throughout the time that they were in the womb. So that's amazing. So starting reading stories, singing to your bum, obviously doing all those lovely things. And when your newborn comes out, they're gonna recognize those sounds. So it will be like a soothing thing for them. If you want to start up the routine of a bedtime story, even when you're pregnant, that will be a lovely thing. And your baby will recognize that as well. And babies are very clever and their most kind of work towards communication and language is actually done right from birth to 12 months is where they get the grounding of how we speak and they learn the patterns of language so they're hearing us they obviously they're not understanding all the words but they're hearing the patterns of our language they're hearing when we stop that we pause, that we take breaths between words. Obviously they're learning the rhythm of language. So obviously the more language that they hear right from the get go is brilliant. So that's why obviously reading and singing to your bump is really, really great, isn't it, Margaret? It certainly is. And, and saying that, um, one of the fascinating things I learned was that exactly what you said, the pattern and the rhythm of language, but that's whatever language you're speaking to your baby. So babies have the ability to speak any language in the world if they hear it. So if you yeah. speak more than one language at home, speak to your baby in the language that you feel really comfortable with. And, um, and then, you know, they'll pick that up. And if other, another family member speaks a different language, they speak to their baby in that language, the baby in that language. So it's absolutely amazing. And babies can just absorb all that. So it's, it's brilliant, yeah. It is and totally. the way that we talk to babies, that sort of parentese voice, that sort of slightly high pitched, um, almost lyrical way you naturally speak to a baby. That's really important as well, because they can tune in much more easily to that slightly higher pitched lyrical way that you speak. 
totally. Um, the other thing um, that... Yeah, sorry, Margaret. Uh, sorry, sorry, um, Lay, is, you know, you were saying about they, they seek out the sounds and things that they've been hearing when they're born, but the other thing they seek out is faces, and faces are so important to babies, um, and they'll be looking, you know, for their caregiver's face as soon as they're born, and they need to be able to see your face to then be able to learn to talk themselves because it's all about the mouth movement and your eyes as well. So um, sometimes families get given the little black and white book when um, the baby's, your baby's born or even antenatally sometimes this is given by the health visitor. And just these little three dots is amazing because a baby will see that and think that's like a face because you've got the eyes and, and the, the, the mouth there in the three dots. And then as they get slightly older, you know, with this little pattern here, you've got the face there and you can make these at home. You just get a piece of white paper and a black pen and you can draw your own faces. And there's one where the tongue's sticking out and babies love that. So again, if you see, you know, what age your, then, your baby then starts to poke their tongue out and it's just a lovely little game for them. Totally. They're very clever babies. Obviously, we are their main role model for everything in life and they're watching you and they're listening to you all the time. So obviously, you know, everything you do with your baby makes such a difference. It really does. Um, and obviously, when we think of communication and language as adults, we think of speech and speech sounds. But actually, there's so much more to how your child develops their communication and language skills. And these are things we call the building blocks of communication development. And they're not obviously, like we say, just the speech. Actually, in communication as a whole, only 7% of how we communicate is words. 38% is our tone of voice. And like Margaret was saying, again, that's where with babies, we engage them more, we do higher our voice and we become more animated to engage them. And 55% is our body language. So again, they're reading your faces, they're reading your body language as well. And there's also obviously these building blocks. So there's skills that we need. And first skill is attention and listening. And that's a real skill, listening isn't the same as hearing. You know, hearing is the medical fact, our ears work fine. Listening is a real skill and children have to learn to like listen and, and think. But obviously they can get quite distracted and things. So obviously learning to listen, playing games where you're concentrating for a tiny bit of time. We know little ones obviously can't sit still and things like that, but doing little games, going on sound walks, just sort of, oh, what can you hear? What's that? Just trying to get them to tune in to listening. That's really, really important because obviously we need to listen to be able to learn. Can I just jump in there, Elaine, about yeah, something yeah. I really learned um, that really helped me that I learned on an all about boys course and about that listening, um, which is from one of your family centres. Mm -hmm. And that is that for, for particularly sort of like toddler age and above, um, if your child's particularly playing, a good thing to do is just go over to them if you want to talk, just touch them on the shoulder and say their name and then they will listen. Because if you just shout from the other side of the room, um, you know, Tommy, please tidy your toys up, they're going to be so engrossed, they're not going to be here to, to hear that. Okay. So that touching yes. talk, awesome. brilliant. And trying to be on their level, being face to face. Hmm. Like we say, you can't just shout it out like Margaret says from the other side of the room, go and get your shoes. They're not ignoring you on purpose. That's just the way that their brains are developing at the time. Remember, we can't, talk to children really as we talk to adults their brains are at a different level of um, development than ours so we do have to change the way that we communicate with our children and obviously play and interaction that's crucial play is the child's world that's where they learn everything is through play so even learning with um, communication and language we just incorporate that into everything they're doing so, for example, if your child's playing with a car, 
they might not obviously be able to say car, they might make the sounds for car, brum, brum, brum. These are what we call symbolic sounds. Often children make the sounds for things before they associate it with the name of the thing. But that's brilliant. And we don't want to dismiss any forms of communication your child makes. That's all great. So we just add to it. So you'd be like, oh, yes, broom, broom, you've got a car. You've got a red car. We just add language on and we're just modeling it. But we're not dismissing anything that they're doing. We're just praising it. But we're repeating it. So we were adding all the time. And you're almost and commenting on what they're doing as well, aren't you, Elaine? So, totally. so instead of always, rather than asking them all the time, what are they doing? You're really just sort of yes. observing and, and like commenting on, on what they're doing. And, and you say just them, totally. you know, almost telling them back what they're doing so that they're understanding that. And, and yeah, totally, totally. And we don't want to take over their play. We want to model what they're doing and just join in. You know, we don't want to go, oh, actually, no, let's move that. Let's put that there. We want to let them take the lead, but we're just adding and modeling the correct language and just playing along with them, which is really important. And then understanding children need to hear what something is called lots and lots of time to understand the word. And this obviously is repetition. So obviously they've got to make the connection in their brain to that word they're here. And like we say, a lot of these first words are obviously words that they're hearing over and over again. And then their favorite words, and then they've made that connection and then they've got the understanding um, of what that is. So that's really a thing. And just talking, obviously, like we say, it's not all about the correct sounds. We're not going to worry if they're saying nana instead of banana. And we're not going to dismiss. We're not going to say, no, don't say nana, say banana. We never do that. We just say, yes, that's right. It's a banana. We just model the correct language. Like we say, it's, it's really common for children to drop the first sounds and the last sounds of, of words when they're starting to talk. So that's perfectly normal as well. And finally, those speech sounds are the icing on the cake. But they're the first thing that as adults we notice. So we might think our child's having, you know, oh, they're not talking as well as other children. But we have to look, have they got all of these other building blocks? Are they working on these building blocks as well? And eventually the speech sounds will come and every child develops at their own rate. It's the same with walking, crawling, you know, everything. They all develop at their own rate. So it's really important. Try not to compare your child to other children who might be very fluent talkers. Um, obviously, you probably always know one and it, that makes you feel worse about yourself. But the most important thing is that we're just working on these skills we're doing there's some really easy little strategies you can do actually it's just not anticipating their needs because often as parents you're amazing you know what your child likes to eat you give them their food they've got all their toys around them they can get what they need they don't have a reason to talk or communicate because everything's being done for them so it's just little things, giving them simple choices, maybe saying, you know, would you like some milk or some water? Just two simple choices. And obviously they might not be able to say the words, but they can point and gesture and go, oh, you would like the milk. Giving them choices, moving toys out of the way, maybe if they've got some favorite toys, put them high on a shelf. So they've got to look around and think, oh, and they've got to come to you to try and you know and they might pull you and again and pointing and body language that is all forms of communication so you go oh so you want your dinosaur do you you know you're just trying to give them a reason to communicate and giving them like margaret said that response time because children's brains take uh, oh at least 30 seconds longer than ours to process information um, and we do a little example of this and we, so if i was to say to margaret and Margaret's not going to answer for 30 seconds. Margaret, would you like a cup of tea? I'd say yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> but if Margaret didn't reply within 30 seconds, if I said, Margaret, would you like a cup of tea? I can't even get to 10 seconds because it's the really silence is hard. And uh, yeah, I mean, I struggled for, with my son with that, that response time. And, and particularly yeah. like grandparents too, you know, they'd ask him a question and it would be like, three seconds and he'd have to reply that's as a parent I really struggled with trying to slow down yeah slow down that's really important isn't it slowing down our speech as well emphasizing keywords you know would you like the banana or the orange 
giving them simple choices, giving them time to respond and giving them a reason to communicate with you. So try not to anticipate all their needs. And it, it is hard if you've got big brothers and sisters and things as well. And they're, you know, they're being helpful or they're just getting things for them. It's really hard. And getting on their level so they can see your face, like Margaret says, right from the get go, all through communication. We need to see the faces. We need to turn off background noise as well, if possible. Not having the TV and the radio on in the background, just as usual, because that really does impair their listening and attention skills. So when they're playing or you're playing with them or looking at books, doing anything, try not to have any background noise on as well. That really, really helps. This is so, uh, you know, I, I just learned so much. You know, I, I didn't know all this until I started using the family centres and I just found it really, really helpful and you know learning oh. all this I mean all, for me it was just natural to share books and rhymes with my um, little one because obviously you know books and, and rhymes are, are what I, I, I love and I work in the library and I help the libraries deliver the baby rhyme times um, I mean it's been really hard this year with uh, well, the last 18 months where we've not been able to do our in-house sessions because of Covid um, so what's happening in the libraries at the moment is most of the libraries are open now. Some of the very smaller ones might not be open all their full hours, but certainly the larger ones are. And um, we've got so many books for families to choose from at the moment because people haven't been in to borrow them all. The place is packed full of picture books and board books and information books to share with your little ones. So do please come down, get your free library ticket it doesn't cost to borrow uh, to join the library to borrow books as long as you remember to bring them back on time and you know you were talking about choice two choices between your milk and your orange in the library there's so <laughs> many choices um and and you know that's absolutely really lovely as well for children because it, they don't because you're not having to pay to borrow the books um as i say providing you bring them back on time it's absolutely brilliant so you can choose the children can choose you can choose what you like if you then get them home and find that you don't like what you've chosen it doesn't matter so much because then you just bring them back and choose some different ones or hopefully you'll discover that what you have chosen you really like and then your child will want them read again and again and again which is that repetition that you were talking about how children learn um and um, you know lots of uh, i love it when people come up to me and say you know their child's favourite book is. It's usually Shark in the Dark, which I don't mm. think I've, no, I haven't brought that one out with me today, or Shark in the Park that they want again and again, um, or you know, lovely books like Hungry Caterpillar or The Buffalo, but there's lots and lots of ones that become your child's favourite. Yeah, um, totally. So, so yeah, do come and, and, and discover what's in the library with your little one. And with the Rhyme Times, um, we're hoping to restart those probably in se sort of September time, COVID regulations permitting if there's not, you know, third waves happening. Because over the summer, we've got a really exciting um, project going on called Summer Reading Challenge. And that's where children can come into the library, they get a little, um, what we call paper wallet, a little wallet with lots of artwork on. And then for every book they read, they get a sticker. And if they manage to read six books by the end of the holidays, they get a certificate and a medal. Sorry, I've not got them to show you on screen, um, but it's for children of all ages. So even if children aren't reading by themselves, they can have books read to them or they can listen to our audio books on BorrowBox. And then they just to say, choose whatever they like and come back and tell the library staff or the volunteers about what they've been reading. And, and you know, for the older children, those that are sort of like reception age and above it's just a really really good way of getting their reading skills and keeping them up over the summer and and choosing those fun books to read so that they see reading as a really pleasurable activity for whatever mm. they want to to look at um so Absolutely. starting on saturday so anytime over the summer do pop down to your local library 
That's lovely. It is, isn't it? It's getting that love of books. And even as a parent yourself, if you think, oh, actually, I don't read very much, just modelling that, you know, even if you have magazines at home, you have anything, letting your child see you looking at something that's written, you know, that's on a page that you have to turn, you know, we're doing it. We have a whole world of screens. We know that's obviously the way the world is. But actually, we, there's nothing more important than actually a physical book that right from the get go, learning that fine motor skill of turning a page seems very simple. But actually, you know, that is a real skill and children will turn lots of pages at once as they start. That's why the board books are really great. Yes, lovely examples. Well, I love all those. You can find these all over the place, but that's not my series. And like yeah. exactly like you say, it's, it's a tactile with a screen. It all feels smooth and the same. Whereas if you get the lovely board books, you know, you can feel them, you can touch them. And actually talking about listening that we spoke about earlier, children's brains listen differently when they're having a book read to them than they do if they're watching television. So when you watch television, it's more of a sort of a passive listening. So the children aren't yes. really getting involved. It's all happening to them. Whereas when you're reading a story with them, you know, they're really listening and they're looking at the pictures and they might want to comment on what the pictures are doing or you might do that um, and you can talk about them. I mean, one of our favourites, we were talking earlier, weren't we, Elaine, saying one of our top favourite books is Dear Zoo because how can you not have fun with this book? It's got animals in, it's got the noises in, it's got the children guessing who's underneath and the anticipation. And it doesn't matter how many times you read it, is, is it going to be an elephant underneath? Or today, is it going to be a dinosaur? <gasps> it's the elephant yeah. underneath. <laughs> it is, it's a lovely classic. It really is. And like Margaret was saying, a lot of the popular books, the Graffalos, a lot all the Julia Donaldson ones, the Nick Sharrett ones that does the shark in the park, they all have got those ma the magic three R's that we talk about, rhyme, repetition and rhythm. Because that's how children's brains are really wired up for rhyme, repetition and rhythm. It, it, it's just rocket fuel for their brains and, and nursery rhymes as well. We call rocket fuel for brains. And a lot of people might think nursery rhymes are a bit old fashioned and things like that. But actually, there's so much research on how wonderful nursery rhymes are in just all manner of forms of, of development for your child, but especially communication and language. And um, Margaret was saying earlier that someone's first word she knew was row. Their little child was row because they love doing row, row, row the boat. And when you think about all the nursery rhymes, they do have this rhyme, repetition and rhythm going on in them. So singing, it's a lovely activity to do with your child. And it's like we say, because rhythm is really, really crucial. And you can have fun with rhymes. You could make even like a little nursery rhyme basket. For example, you can have some little items in it. You know, for example, a bus for wheels on the bus, you know, a spider for incy wincy spider. And you could just have it and say, oh, what rhyme would you like to sing today? You know, and even if they can't verbalize the rhyme, they'll make pick up the bus and you say oh shall we sing the wheels on the bus no it's a lovely time to have just to have a little basket around with a few little prompts as well for doing things and instruments are great as well aren't they Margaret singing yeah. along with instruments and you can make your own really yes. simple one like plastic bottle <laughs> bit of dried rice bit of dried pasta the classic obviously seal it up for a little one put a good bit of insulating tape around it but that's brilliant as well. And that is a really good way of working on their listening and attention skills, because especially as they get older, you can tap, you know, or shake um, certain rhythms and see if they can copy it. So you could, you know, do a and see if they can copy that back. That's a real skill. That is a real skill for doing that. And even simple things for when they're little, you know, if you shake it fast, you know, if you're happy and you know it, shake it fast. And when you shake it fast, it's really loud. And if you're happy and you know it, shake it slow. And then it's like, oh, makes a different noise. It's quieter. You know, all of these things that might seem really simple, but they actually make such a, such a difference to all those building blocks to that, that language and communication development. So, and, and having games, fun. aren't they? That's the thing, Elaine. They're, they're just real yeah. games that you play. And there's a really good website that I like to promote to people called um, Tiny Happy People. Oh, it's a BBC it's brilliant. website tiny happy people and there's loads of ideas of you know like making a shaker one of my favorite ones is peekaboo 
playing peekaboo with your baby from about four months old. In fact, I brought my baby <laughs> along. <laughs> and you know, all you need is whatever most parents, not every parent, but most parents having their change bag, your Muslim square, your baby, and either cover not all babies like their face covered, so usually it's better to cover your face, and you're just playing peekaboo in that anticipation. So Pika, 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 boo. Pika, <laughs> Pika, Pika, boo. And it's so I simple. It. When they're little, they'll have the surprise and then you get the giggles. And how lovely yeah, is that? Lovely. Yeah. It really is. It's so lovely, definitely. So, yes. Can I just sing another one, Elaine? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So, one that we, we do at um, some of our antenatal, or, you know, when we come out and talk to parents. Um, before baby's born but when babies are first born there's just a really really simple rhyme that you can do again to help those mouth movements to strengthen baby's jaw which helps with feeding and also helps with speech and it's just so simple it just goes cheek chin cheek chin cheek chin nose cheek chin cheek chin cheek chin toes cheek chin Cheek, chin, cheek, chin, and up, baby goes. Oh, and that's it's lovely. So simple, but it's just, and, and, and it's really amazing when you do it with a tiny baby and then you start and they start moving their mouth uh, and say it sort of strengthens their, their jaws and everything. And that's really helpful for, for them feeding and everything. So, oh, that's lovely. But that's showing you right from the get go the, the power of just rhymes as well. And like you say, because they're interactive, we're touching, you know, sort of doing Tommy thumb. You can touch your baby's fingers. We often talk about that one at baby massage, you know, rub each finger while you're singing Tommy thumb, Tommy thumb, where are you? It's making it, isn't it, that whole interactive experience with you. And like you say, that you won't get from just plonking them in front of a screen. You know, they might, they're obviously hearing a bit of language, but it's not interactive. It's not gonna have the same wonderful effects as you physically interacting, playing with your child, doing all of these things, which is really great. So, so yes. of course, when we get our library sessions back up and running, um, you say hopefully um, at the end of the summer after we've done the summer reading challenge that's um, our plan um, families can come along there and learn some of the rhymes but otherwise I mean I would suggest people go on to like the CBB's website if they don't know many or really good the book trust website as well and I think Chloe's going to put those in the chat for people um, you know if they want to if they're not familiar with a lot of nursery rhymes yes and on our Facebook page here all of our videos are kept and if you troll through we've had lovely people doing lovely baby sing and play sessions all throughout lockdown so you can just find one of those videos and again you'll hear some rhymes because you might have forgotten them yourself so like Margaret said that that's a good way we've got lots of videos on on this Facebook page so do look back in them as well and I, so I think they're Elaine as well sorry I didn't realize we realized we were right. out of time, but <laughs> the libraries as well a lot of the libraries have been doing their own online online rhyme times so do follow your local library on their Facebook page just for all the information about what's going on, because we've got some outdoor rhyme times happening over the summer at different libraries. So just follow your own libraries, local libraries, Facebook page, see what's happening. Oh, fabulous. That's so great. So I think the main top tips are to remember with communication and language development is that repetition. So what we say with language is we feed it in, we don't force it out. So it's feeding in language. So the more language they hear in their world, they're better right from the get go. Slowing down when we speak to children, like we say, giving them that time to respond, which may seem a long time for us, but they do need it emphasizing keywords, the things that we want to say, cutting off the background noises as much as possible and not anticipating their needs, giving them a reason to communicate and then just having fun, you know, incorporating all these lovely things, singing, rhymes, books, everything during play, because obviously that's how children learn through play. So yes, have lots of fun and the libraries are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love my my boys did the oh, reading okay. challenge. I think I've still got some of the medals from back in the day, and they're big teenagers now. So <laughs> it was so lovely. Thank you. Did um, did we have any questions, Chloe, from anybody who's watching today? 
I've just had a look through. We've had a few come in, Margaret and Elaine. We've had mostly questions about, um, so when are the rhyme times starting again? At the libraries, I think you answered that, Margaret, already. Yeah, so do follow your local um, library Facebook page um, because we'll, we, each individual library will be posting there on when theirs is going to start. But as I say, our main focus over the summer is really going to be getting those children in to, to do their summer reading challenge there. Wild World Heroes, as it's called, for this summer. Lovely. Mm -hmm. I'll just double check and see if we've got any more comments. I think that's all the comments we've got at the moment. So what we'll do is if any comments come in after our live, if you're watching this back recorded, just pop your questions in the comments below and I'll pass them on to Margaret and Elaine and we'll get back to you about them. And thanks everyone for joining today. And thank you so much, Elaine and Margaret for this brilliant live. You shared some fantastic tips. So I think it's really, really good. It's lovely. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> and have fun with your little ones. That's the main thing, just have fun. Thank you. Definitely. Brilliant. Thank you. Have a lovely afternoon, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.